Hello, welcome back. Last episode we created this very basic setup, and this episode we're going to start putting things in it that, that we can move around. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a cursor. Um, and for this we're going to need an empty game component, and we'll just name it cursor. And we're going to make this thing fly around to wherever the player's mouse goes. Uh, but in order to be able to see it, we're going to go ahead and just add an empty cursor object uh, in the form of a cube. Now let's go ahead and make it a sphere. So we're going to call this uh, empty cursor, and we're going to put it inside the cursor, and we're going to go ahead and create a texture for it. So here we need to create a new folder called materials, and create a new material called empty cursor. Actually, we'll just call it. Um, well, we'll just call it. Uh, 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 hot link. Uh, we'll call it the hard point texture because we're going to be using it for hard points later. So we change it over to a transparent material, change it color to, say, yellow and mostly transparent, and then put it onto our empty cursor and go visit our empty cursor. So there you go. You can see that we can see through the empty cursor. Um, so we need to go ahead and make it so that there is a uh, a script specifically for dealing with this cursor. You have to pardon any background noise. I don't do any editing on these, so ah, oh, damn it! As you can see, <laughs> where are my scripts? She said. By the way, a lot of people have been asking me to do JavaScript scripts. Um, no. JavaScript is not a very good language, uh, and it's even worse when you're trying to do stuff that gets complicated. Uh, JavaScript is only useful when you're trying to do very basic stuff, and as you get more complicated, it collapses. It gets too difficult to maintain. Uh, so we'll just drag this onto the cursor. Not the empty cursor marker, but the cursor itself. And then we'll open it up. Oh, uh, by the way, if you leave a comment because you've been confused by something and, and are looking to try and get a fix, uh, try and figure out how to fix it, uh, that's fine. But when you figure out how to fix it, don't delete your original comment. Instead, just comment and tell us how you fixed it, because later on people might uh, want to see how you did your fix, and uh, otherwise they're going to have to do the same exact thing and post it and wait. And so leave your comment and then leave how you solved it, uh, and don't delete either one. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just do a simple raycast. So for a raycast, you need a raycast hit and you need a ray. And the ray we're going to get from the camera, so... Screen point to ray, and our screen point is the mouse. Uh, there we are. So when we have that, we just do a quick little if physics dot ray cast ray out hit. So physics.raycast returns a boolean, but you can fill up this hit with uh, with the actual results, and that's what we're going to be using. We're going to just say this dot. Uh, sorry, it's not this. Is it? It's um, transform dot position equals hit dot point. So that means that the uh, cursor will continually go to exactly where we're pointing, and the terrain has uh, a lovely uh, collision built into it already. So you can see that um, we have that tiny yellow ball floating. Uh, against the terrain. Now that uh, that's a little bit small, so let's go ahead and just make this much larger, just so we can see it. Up oh, now you can see we have the error that we had before in the Minecraft like. Uh, we don't want this to have a sphere collider because that's actually going to make it so that we collide with itself. There we go. Perfect. But that uh, collider issue did show us that when we do add things that have colliders, such as buildings, uh, the mouse pointer will be able to interact with them just fine. So the next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and add in a, uh, uh, a control scheme. So let's go ahead and just do that for the camera. Uh, there we go. We'll add that to the main camera. Open it up. 
So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and check for a couple of things. The first thing we want to check for is movement uh, with the WSAD or arrows, because that'll be panning our camera. So we just do transform.position plus equals fap. Uh, no, it's transform.right times whole use times time dot delta time. Uh, and then we add in, so we can just do this later on. So the other question is how we move forward. Um, and the problem with moving uh, uh, forward is that we actually want to stay the same distance from the ground. Uh, we want to pan along the surface rather than um, uh, rather than diving towards the surface, even if we're looking towards the surface. Transform.right will always be perpendicular uh, to the surface, but transform.forward or transform.up, they're going to be randomly wandering off. So what we actually need to do is uh, normalize it. So we need to get a normalized vector here. I mean, uh, sorry, we need to flatten it and then normalize it. Uh, and the reason that we're adding those two vectors together is that we want to be able to look exactly straight down and not have an error. You know, I can't remember what that is and it won't tell me, so we'll have to get that in a second there. And we multiply by time dot delta time because our frame rates are going to vary. Um, but this is actually extremely slow, uh, so we're going to go ahead and multiply by 10. It's still going to be too slow. We'll, we'll see that in a minute there. Um, so let's go ahead and see. Yeah, capital N. Let's go ahead and see if that works. Oh, did I add it to the main camera? Inside I did. I added it to the main camera while we were running, so it didn't actually get added. It only got added in runtime. Alright, so here you can see we can now control the camera in terms of moving left, right, up, and down. Uh, sorry, left and right, uh, forward and backwards. But we can't tilt the camera or move up and down just yet. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to add those. Those are the Kerbal files. Uh, that's what I'm looking for. So the trigger for zooming in and out is going to be the mouse. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and say uh, uh, float um, mouse wheel equals input dot get axis mouse scroll wheel. And I think I remember that right. And then we're going to go ahead and say transform dot position plus equals uh, vector three dot up times mouse wheel times, we don't need to multiply this by delta time because uh, mouse wheels are discrete events that happen in zero time, uh, so it doesn't matter how much time has passed for the computer or for the frame because the input is not time sensitive. So we're just going to, uh, yeah. so let's go ahead and see if that worked. Yep, that works, but as I expected, we're working with much larger units, and that's on purpose because we want to be able to uh, um, build buildings, and buildings are going to be pretty large. There we go. But I have it inverted, so let's go ahead and invert it in here. Okay, so the other thing we need to do is panning. So then we do if, not off mesh link, if input.mouseButton one, so if we have right clicked and we're holding the right click, you know, I actually want to use the right click for building related things, so let's use the middle click for this. So if we're middle clicking, then we want to actually get the core motion of the mouse and use that to change our own orientation. So the way we need to do that is that there are some uh, raw values here, so uh, 
cores equals input dot, and I think that they are technically axes. Yeah, they are. I don't remember their name. Let's go look it up. So if we look into the project settings input, we look into axes, there should be some raw mouse. Yeah, mouse X and mouse Y. There they are. Easy, easy names to remember. I just forgot them. So that will get the change in our mouse uh, uh, motion. Uh, now, I actually don't remember whether these are... Um, no, even if they were timeless events like the mouse wheel, uh, the smoothing algorithm used on axes is going on their axis is going to make it so that they. Hmm. We'll have to experiment. I don't remember whether there's time or not in these. Um, quaternion. Uh, sorry, it's transform dot rotation uh, dot. Uh, rotate, uh, is it transform dot rotate around? There it is. I think that they're probably not time sensitive because the mouse motion is not like a key that you hold down and in every frame it recalculates. The mouse motion is a specific amount of mouse motion. So I think that that should be okay. All right, so let's go ahead and see whether that works. So I'll mouse click and drag down, drag up, drag left, drag right. It does work. Um, the vertical is probably the opposite of what we want because it's uh, uh, currently doing um, kind of a uh, inverted mouse there. There we go. But we do have a problem where um, we get this tilted camera. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make it so that our up is always going to remain up. Um, uh, we want to remain so that we're f our horizontal is flat whenever possible. Um, I'm not entirely sure how to do that without brute forcing it. But basically we've got this spin, and I can show it to you right here. Uh, we've got X, Y, and Z, and we should be able to get away without using any of the, um, is it Y or Z? I think it's Z. Yeah. We should be able to get away without using any Z uh, spin at all. Uh, now, we could manually modify it. Now, well, this is going to be, I'm trying to remember how to do this, and I don't, unfortunately, I just don't remember how to do it. We're going to go ahead and leave it like that for now, and what we're going to do is when you let go of the mouse button, we're going to go ahead and lerp the camera so that it is always uh, looking in that direction. So transform dot quaternion, uh, transform dot rotation equals quaternion dot lerp, uh, transform dot rotation, and quaternion Dot look rotation and uh, uh, we just do the uh, transform dot forward and comma time dot delta time oh this will work great um, we actually don't need to do that we can just do that right here we don't need to be worried about whether we're doing in the mouse button or not so now when we rotate you can see that it works oh that's a right click we're in the scene view I was like, that's, that, that's too crisp. <laughs> that's not what I told it to do. I'll see there. Now, the reason for that is because look at takes a vector 3 dot up as a, uh, uh, takes vector 3 dot up as, as, a, as an input. And you can actually change that if you want it to look with a different direction being up. But we don't. So vector 3 dot up should allow us to, to handle this quite nicely. And it also handles the part where you look down and everything spins. It handles that okay too in comparison to most cameras. I call this the seasick cam. Anyhow, that's enough for today.